good to be here. So we're looking at um, certain eye diseases um, using optical coherence tomography and confocal scanning laser or thalmoscopy. Um, and the particular disease we're looking at at the moment is age-related macular degeneration, which is the leading cause of visual impairment and legal blindness in the Western world. And uh, here we have some images. These are conventional, what we call fundus photographs. Um, the one on the left-hand side is a healthy eye, uh, showing the optic nerve head and the, uh, what we call the macular region, which is the sort of darkly pigmented region there. And uh, macular degeneration comes in different forms. The one in the middle shows some of the deposits that we get called drusen, uh, which is in a form called a dry macular degeneration, which is the more common form. And the one on the right is a more advanced form um, showing uh, leakage and hemorrhage, which we call disciform macular degeneration. And uh, in this uh, preliminary study, we've been looking at very early um, ARMD. And uh, we've been trying to, we've been measuring the function at different um, specific areas on the retina, um, which is sensitive to light at the back of the eye. Um, so in the center of the retina and at four positions at uh, five degrees uh, in the side vision and then at 10 degrees in the side vision. So nine points altogether. And uh, we've been using measures of uh, the structural measures we've been using are the imaging, um, the OCT imaging. Uh, using the OCT2, which is commercially available, and uh, the CSLO, which has uh, been developed in the lab of uh, Dr. Melanie Campbell, um, and also, as I said, the, con the conventional fundus photos. And the uh, functional measures, we've been looking at measures like visual acuity, uh, what's the smallest detail that you can uh, see, um, and also contrast sensitivity, looking at grating type of targets um, in those nine areas. And the, the point is to try to correlate uh, what's happening with the structure and what's happening with the function, uh, with the idea that that will give us a better understanding of the disease, and also um, that in future, taking an image of an eye, which is much quicker than uh, measuring the function of an eye, um, we can take an image of the eye and understand what the person's visual function is like, likely to be. So we've done um, grading of the conventional fundus photos uh, at those nine points um, by measuring uh, using a scale that grades the size of those yellow-like deposits there called drusen um, on a scale from about one to five or six. Um, and uh, then we've been looking at these CSLO images. Um, so using the regular fundus image as a sort of template, uh, we've been making composites of the CSLO images. Uh, the CSLO image is done in a smaller size, so it's only a 15 degree angle. Uh, so we have to make the composites. And these ones actually are done with averaging to get better contrast. And uh, we can see that uh, in some cases, in this case, the, there are more um, deposits showing in the regular photo than in the CSLO photo. With the CSLO, we can image at different depths by using different um, um, uh, apertures within the system. Um, but in this case here, uh, we can see that actually the CSLO image is giving us a better um, view of those drusen, those deposits, um, than we see in the regular image. So um, we've also been looking at the OCT images. This is, um, I think it's, um, OCT has already been mentioned um, in this uh, symposium. Uh, it's a low coherence laser interferometry image which scans across a line of the retina and uh, gives us uh, an idea of the reflection amplitude which is then portrayed in a color, a false color image. So the white and red areas are where you've got higher amplitude reflections. And so we have the, um, the retina is shown here, and this is what uh, we call the uh, retinal pigment epithelial epithelium and the choroid capillaris. Um, so this is the uh, layer in which you get these uh, deposits or drusen in early ARMD. And uh, so we've been taking measures of the thickness um, and the variability of the thickness of, of that layer um, compared with um, some control subjects. 
And we're finding that the ARMD subjects, or the early ARMD are showing, as we would expect, perhaps a little bit more variability, some areas where there's thinning and some areas where there's thickening of the, um, the, the membrane here and the choriocapillaris, which is just underneath the retina. So uh, we did find uh, that there were functional deficits in, um, in some of our uh, measures of functional, uh, functional measures. Um, and there were uh, certain uh, subtle structural changes um, that we were able to show with the OCT. Um, at this time, we haven't found a relationship between those two, a clear relationship, um, but we have been using very, very early cases of ARM, sort of um, even before the person is aware of having any functional deficits themselves. Um, so uh, we can go on and look at more advanced uh, cases of maculopathy or a wider range of maculopathy. Um, we would like to go on and use OCT with a higher resolution. Um, and uh, the other possibility is presenting targets actually through the CSLO, which controls better the retinal position on which they're placed. And these are the uh, people whom we have been working with um, so far. Thank you. The goal, yes, the goal would be to look at these um, changes and to be able to say, okay, so if we can take an image of the eye, um, by that image we can see these changes happening, and then we can understand what functional problems that person would be having. Um, that, would be, that would be my goal. Can, can you get any idea of what the, the uh, ch changes or the substances, let's say it's plaque, through use of different frequencies or the spectral analysis? Um, I'm not sure that we can at the moment do that. Um, I mean, you know, histological studies have shown what some of these, these deposits are made of. They're sort of lipid-like deposits. Um, but at the moment, we haven't tried doing that sort of analysis. Questions? Final questions? Go ahead. What kind of spatial resolution can you get with OCT and some of these other methods? Well, this OCT um, gives uh, ten, about 10 microns resolution. Um, but this is, uh, there is actually one on the market which gives a little bit better resolution for the OCT3. We don't have that one yet. Um, and uh, um, I think that there was a presentation earlier by Kostadinka Zosheva, uh, who's working on developing a high resolution OCT. So we're hoping then that we you know, may be able to do this type of study, uh, but which, with much higher resolution and get much more detail of, those, of exactly where those de deposits are. Wayne, remind us of what your resolution is. What resolution is yours? Yeah, it's, it's one micron or so. One micron, okay. And Costa Dinka's, by comparison, is, uh, is she's not? I was about 1.3 volts, which should be natural direction. Depending on the region, I have to use a uh, very between 1.3 and 1.5 volts. Okay. So we think with the, the higher resolution, we may be able to look at the individual layers. Okay. In terms of the physicists, I, I don't know if Park Vic isn't here, but what's the, the smallest resolution that can be obtained through the NMR, the high resolution NMR? Does anyone know that? Well, this is the high resolution NMR? Yeah. Huh. Uh, we write down eight microns. Eight microns. Just 3D uh, and a micro. Okay. That's, that's right. Yeah. So it's an image of the fly, which comes Yeah. Yeah, okay. Still, uh, yeah, below that. Yeah, well, that's, it's human. It's much more, yeah, it's like uh, one-tenth. Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much.